Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. This broadcast is brought to you on this station every Sunday at this time. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, one of the oldest weekly radio church services in the nation. Your liturgist is Pastor David Peters. The Lutheran Radio Choir, under the direction of Marie Zelmer, will open by singing hymn number 566 in Christian worship, entitled, We All Are One in Mission. We all are one in mission. We all are one in goal. Our very gifts united by Christ the Lord of all. A single great commission compels us from above to this, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, we focus our meditation on the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave. Our guest speaker this morning is the Reverend Thomas Bauer, who teaches religion and Latin and directs the festival choir at Shoreland Lutheran High School in the town of Summers in Kenosha County, Wisconsin. Stay tuned as Pastor Bauer talks about gospel outreach with compassion, prayer, and preaching in his sermon entitled, Have a heart for the harvest. We begin our worship in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lutheran Radio Choir will now sing hymn number 282, Lord, open now my heart to hear. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. 
God, our heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Listen now to God's holy word as he inspired St. Paul to write for us in 2 Thessalonians chapters 2 and 3. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored, just as it was with you. And pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not everyone has faith. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson will serve as the text for Pastor Bauer's sermon this morning. It is written by St. Matthew in chapters 9 and 10. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. He called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the zealot and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Let us join in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Pastor Thomas Bauer will speak on the theme, Have a Heart for the Harvest, immediately after the choir sings hymn number 372, I Lay My Sins on Jesus. Jesus, to wash the crimson 
Dear friends in Christ, the Lord of the harvest, this whole lesson hinges on the last words of the text. Freely you have received, freely give. When Jesus sent his disciples on a training mission, he gave them authority to do things they only saw their master do. They received authority to say the word and watch demons wrench their way from helpless victims. They stared down leprosy and other anguishing ailments and watched bodies immediately regenerate until they were completely hale and healthy. They were even told to raise the dead. Whether they did so at this time, we aren't told, but we do know that they did so in the Lord's name after Pentecost. They were given a powerful weapon in their battle against Satan's armies. That tool, the message of the gospel, however, was not properly used if they didn't have the proper heart. You and I possess that same powerful message of the good news of Jesus. It's amazing that we so often regard it so lightly. The tool we have in our possession is able to raise spiritually dead people. It's able to ward off the devil and his legion of angels. It's able to turn tears of hopelessness into tears of joy. But we are nothing if we do not have a proper heart. Jesus had that heart for the work at hand. We are told that he went teaching, preaching, and healing. The force of the verbs is continuous, ongoing action. Jesus knew his time on earth was short, and so he made the most of every opportunity. It is from Jesus that we learn to have a heart for the harvest. He teaches us to reach out with compassion, reach out with prayer, and reach out with preaching. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Literally, Jesus' bowels churned. You know the feeling, don't you? You see the pictures of starving children or the hopeless look of people who are enduring a great tragedy and you feel sick to your stomach. That's the ache that Jesus felt. And why did he feel that way? Because he saw the people as sheep who were cut up and bleeding like they would be if they got caught in a thorn bush or today in a barbed wire fence. They were left alone drifting, easy bait for predators. And where were the shepherds? Jesus knew all too well that they were teaching a religion that brought a hopeless end and not an endless hope. They tie up heavy loads and place them on men's shoulders is the way Jesus described the teaching of the Pharisees and teachers of the law. I wonder how many of the people in Jesus' day were like Martin Luther, always trying to do something to make God please them, but never finding peace in their heart. A pastor tells the story of his early years in the ministry in his first congregation in the Chicago area. As he and his older associate were making hospital calls in downtown Chicago, he was looking at the marvelous skyscrapers. The elder Kretzman said, look at them. And the young pastor said, I am, gazing upward. No, look at them, the people. How many of them know where they are going to spend eternity? Do you wonder if they know or even care? That's what it means to reach out with compassion. Have you ever wondered about the eternal fate of people with whom you walk through a crowded mall or with whom you enjoy a ball game at the stadium or with whom you share the frustrations of a bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic jam? Have you ever thought of the false religions that are so prevalent in the world today as spiritual barbed wire that leaves people helpless and hopeless? Have you ever considered the dangers of those who say, it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you are sincere, or there are many revelations of God and many paths to heaven? Well, how is that compassion stirred up in us? The Holy Spirit works in us. He takes us back to the cross to see holy blood soaked on it. Holy blood that had to pay for our rebellion against God and his law. He shows us the ugliness of our transgressions of indifference to others and our lack of compassion. But at the cross, he also shows us the incomprehensible compassion of a holy God who loved us so much that he would not let us be lost to hell forever. He lets us feel the waters of baptism, which are a testimony to his divine power that frees us from the gripping forces of evil. It is by grace you have been saved. It is a gift of God so that no one can boast. He takes us back to the Bible where it says that God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting men's sins against them. 
The free gift of grace is for all. No one should have to suffer the gruesome punishment of hell. No one should have to be separated from God for all eternity. And compassion means that we see what we have and what so many people in this world don't have. So have a heart for the harvest freely you have received. Freely give. Reach out with Jesus' kind of compassion. And with this mindset, Jesus told his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. A way to capture the translation of this verse would be, keep on begging the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to throw out laborers into the harvest field. It's as big as this planet, and there need to be missionaries and teachers scattered over the width and breadth of it. Pastor Dan Kalpine, the former administrator of the Board for World Missions, tells about a time he and a team of pastors got caught in a many, many mile traffic jam going through Taipei, Taiwan. And seeing that mass of humanity, almost all of whom follow Buddha or other forms of ancestor worship, only deepened his resolve to pray more fervently and more often. When in our prayers we only pray for ourselves and the needs of our family, we sin. We show no regard for the lost for whom Jesus wants us to pray. Prayers that extend no farther than the walls of our home only prove how shallow our faith is and how selfish we really are. So God, forgive us if we do not remember the lost in our prayers and forgive us as fathers and mothers if we do not teach our children to learn how to pray for the lost. Understand the grace of God in these words. God doesn't need us to get his work done, but he invites us freely to be a part of his all-important mission. He invites us to pray fervently and regularly for laborers in the harvest field. That means that you can pray for your children or grandchildren or church members or students in our schools to become pastors and teachers in the harvest field. The month of May is always an exciting time for my church body. It's when the new pastor and teacher candidates are called into the harvest field. In response to the prayers of his people, the Lord of the harvest is filling our schools with willing disciples. But there is always, always room for more. And when we pray, we remember that this is God's work. He alone is the one to have uh, able to accomplish what we ask for in prayer. So have a heart for the harvest. Freely you have received, freely give. Reach out with prayer. Make the prayer for more pastors and teachers as much your daily prayer as your prayers for health, safety, and for spiritual growth. After prayer, Jesus then took action. He wasn't thinking about potential candidates for harvest work. They were right in front of him. He called his 12 disciples to him. And he gave him this command, Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any towns of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. And as you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and drive out demons. First and foremost, they were to preach. The wonderful signs that accompanied gave proof that they were sent out from God but preaching came first. So when we say have a heart for the harvest, we know that this comes when we reach out with preaching. We have a specific message that mirrors the message of the apostles, the message of law and gospel. Jesus will be coming soon to judge the living and the dead. Are you ready to face him? Repent and believe the good news. To repent means that hearts are terrorized by the thought of damnation. And to believe means to be that terrorized hearts turn away from sin and turn to Jesus because he has endured the punishment of damnation in their place. We share that gospel in the means of grace. There are many who claim that people can find peace with God as long as they are searching and sincere. But St. Paul says, how can they believe in one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? The Lord God of all, the God of absolute power and might, could have seen to it that his message of hope and comfort was transmitted through pollen, but he chose preaching. He could have carried it around the world through pigeons, but he chose people. What a privilege and blessed God has given to us. 
Unless we get the idea that this work is only for workers who have been called into public harvest field, let's remember a couple of things. The word preach means to proclaim a message for someone else. You are called by God to be one who proclaims this message. You proclaim it to one another in church. You proclaim it to your family. You proclaim it when someone asks you to give the hope that you have. You cannot read these words and think only and specifically about others who are called to do the work. Think of yourself too. And remember that the harvest time is now. Jesus could return at any moment. You may be the only contact a person has with the gospel message. What a privilege that the Lord gives you that opportunity to be the one to share the story of how Jesus came to earth to live a perfect life and die the ultimate death so that they could be assured of eternal life. Jesus doesn't tell us in this text to produce believers, friends. He tells us to talk about his life, death, and resurrection. He will do the rest. He tells us to reach out because he freely gave us the ultimate gift of forgiveness and eternal life, and they are free to all people. So have a heart for the harvest. Reach out like Jesus did. Reach out with compassion, with prayer, and with preaching. For freely you have received, freely give. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this Independence Weekend, look upon our nation and behold our many needs. Do not, because of our flagrant sins, turn away from us. Rather, be merciful and grant your aid in all matters that distress us. Increase the faith of all Christians, that we may not fall prey to the sins that have so badly eroded our society. Enable us, Christians, by fearless professions of faith and godly lives to be guiding lights, leading others to glorify you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent to save us and the world. Fill all our hearts with a heart and passion for the harvest. Bless especially the Christians serving in the armed forces. Keep them ever in your love and protection. By your spirit, strengthen their faith and avert whatever might prove harmful to their souls. Give whatever help is needed to carry out their appointed duties and be with them in their lonely hours. Keep them from sin. Together we join in praying the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Lutheran Radio Committee is pleased to offer you a copy of today's sermon by Pastor Bauer. If you would like a free copy, if you'd like a free gift, or if you'd like to keep hearing our messages week after week, please write to us, and if possible, send a tax-deductible contribution to the Lutheran Radio Committee, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. We'd love to have you check out our website at www.lutheranrcs.com. That's www.lutheranrcs.com. 
Com. You've been listening to the Lutheran Radio Church Service coming from the chapel at Wisconsin Lutheran College. The Lutheran Radio Choir will now close by singing hymn number 426, Yours Forever, God of Love. May our triune God be with you until we meet again. Yours The preceding service was brought to you by the Lutheran Radio Church Service, broadcasting radio church services every Sunday morning since 1928. You may request a copy of this morning's sermon. Please pray for this important ministry. This program has always relied heavily on your financial gifts to produce and present these broadcasts. Recently, we've fallen on challenging financial times. Although we've been blessed with your monetary gifts, we need to continue to receive $400 per week from you, our listeners, to allow our ministry to continue. Please prayerfully consider donating any amount the Lord enables you to give to this Christ-centered gospel ministry. Please mail your gift to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. Thank you for your generous support of the Lutheran Radio Church Service, and may God bless your day.